Well, in the aftermath of the Uvalde massacre, the country is once again grappling with the question of how to protect our kids in school. Yeah, and once again, one idea is training teachers how to handle a gun. But do we really need more guns in schools? Does it even make sense? One longtime researcher says no, it doesn't. And joining us is University of Virginia Professor Dewey Cornell. He is a forensic psychologist who specializes in school security and youth violence. So, Professor, thank you so much for being here this morning. And let's thank get you. let's get into this because the idea is that there would be is the would be shooters would be somewhat deterred if they knew a teacher also had a gun. What is wrong with that line of thinking? There are so many things wrong with that line of thinking. Teachers have enough to do. Asking them to carry firearms and protect their students is way beyond reasonable. We know that trained officers in the Texas shooting and in the Parkland shooting did not follow their training, did not go after the shooter. It's very difficult to do. This is not a TV show. This is reality. And uh, shooting the bad guy is just not the, the best way to prevent violence. You know, we have a plague of violence in the United States, uh, a plague all over the country. Uh, and there's a vaccine for that plague, a vaccine that they have in Europe and Canada, uh, all around the world. And it's reasonable gun safety laws that limit people's access to assault rifles and other types of firearms. And, and we are blocked from having that vaccine, which we know scientifically reduces the likelihood and the risk of gun violence. So uh, we have an eight point plan uh, that a group of violence preventers violence prevention researchers have reviewed all the scientific evidence. We need gun safety laws, but we also need improved mental health services. All of these individuals who commit mass shootings, we find out later that they leaked their intentions. They had people worried, friends and coworkers and family members knew that they were up to something, but they didn't know who to tell. If we have threat assessment teams in our schools and communities, we found that threat assessment teams are very effective at providing support, mental health support, and structure to individuals before they pick up a gun. Well, let me ask you this, though. If, if the person, the would-be shooter, doesn't say anything, you don't see any warning signs, how do you identify that person? Well, we won't be able to identify everyone, but studies of mass shootings find that the vast majority of them do leak their intentions well in advance, not 15 minutes in advance, but days, weeks, and months in advance. Uh, th this young man was called a school, a school shooter by, by co-workers. Uh, the young man in the Buffalo shooting uh, had aroused a lot of concern, had even been briefly hospitalized because of his threats of violence. Uh, when we look back at these cases, the vast majority of them have leaked their intentions and if we have threat assessment teams, law enforcement and mental health working together, then we can take effective action. But prevention has to start before the gunman shows up at school. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk about universal background checks and the laws that you're talking about. And then there's also this conversation that often comes up, and there's arguments on both sides about armed school guards, right? Parkland had one at Marjorie Stoneless Douglas, but he did not go after the gunman. So what are your thoughts here on the idea of armed guards in the school? Uh, it's the same problem. Uh, prevention has to start before the gunman shows up. We can't concentrate all of our efforts on a last second, last resort effort. Uh, we need to think much more proactively about identifying troubled individuals long before they show up uh, with a gun. But what do you say to those parents that say, you know, we need some sort of line of defense? So a security well, uh, guard who's I, I trained parents, to have a firearm. Yeah, sure. I, I, I understand that concern. I, I had children in, in, the, in the public schools as well. And, but let me point something out. Uh, we focus on the shootings in schools. Schools are actually statistically the most safe place for our kids to be. We have far fewer shootings in schools than in our restaurants and communities and, and public areas. Uh, a, ch a child is 50 times more likely to be murdered outside of school than in school. So I tell parents, if you don't want your child to be shot in the United States, send them to a school. It may not feel like that after a high-profile shooting, mm -hmm. but if we look over the course of this country, or if we look at all the shootings that occur, children are safer in schools than anywhere yeah. else. 
Yeah, but and what you're saying right here is obviously take the preventative measures that often come up after a mass shooting in terms of gun legislation. But there's also the idea, and we're experiencing it right now in New York City, where there's this conversation of metal detectors and so on and so forth. So if you're going to, are you, are you for beefing up security at schools and having some line of defense, whether it be a metal detector or something at the entrance? Well, uh, the jury's kind of out on the effectiveness of metal detectors or scientific studies of that. We do need security in schools. We do need to control access. Uh, we do need law enforcement officers in buildings, but not as armed guards, uh, as individuals to provide security, as serve as role models, uh, deal with fights and so forth. So there's an important role for security, but we're going way over the top here with gunshot detectors and bulletproof vests and so forth. Mm. Anyone who thinks we should arm teachers should logically think that we should be arming our wait staff in our restaurants as well. Well, let me ask because you. Because they're far more likely to have a shooting. What about what's going on in Washington? I mean, do you think that there's any chance that we could get any actual meaningful gun legislation passed? I hope so. That's a, that's a political question. I hope the politicians will pay attention to science uh, rather than politics. All right. Thank you so much for your time this morning. University of Virginia Professor Dewey Cornell, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you.